Hello again, my discipleship friends. Thank you for joining me as we study God's Word. Today, the passage we're highlighting is 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. The Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded, and he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. And I call this this article, and or this journal entry, I call it, He Was Found By Them, because as we see about the nature of God, is that when we seek him, when our desire is to know the true God, he lets himself be known. He wants to be known by us. He wants us to be close to him. But explaining this in this original passage, Chronicles was written to the Jews after the exile. They were seeking to restore the kingdom, and they needed to know what made a kingdom that was pleasing in the eyes of God. And how does this passage fit with the verses before and after it? We see that Asa was a moderately good king. He destroyed the, the idols to false gods. He, he destroyed a lot of the temples to Asherah, Baal. He, he, he accomplished many of the good things. But we also see how this chapter describes that he was one who was not wholly true to the Lord. He did have some of his own failings, but overall, compared to most kings, he was a decent example. But why would this be? Why would the Holy Spirit include this passage in his book? Well, we see that Israel was blessed when they sought after the Lord, but they were cursed when they ignored the Lord. You know, he was making himself plainly available to them. I I find the 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 language here interesting. That says that for a long time Israel was without the true God. For a long time they had been worshiping a false notion of who Yahweh is, or just flat out worshiping the wrong gods, you know, Baal, Asherah. Um, but then it's interesting having this tied in here, um, as, as, if it's, as if it's related to one another, that these are not separate ideas, that they're without a teaching priest and without law. Um, so part of what the, the explanation here that that Azariah is is speaking on behalf of God is that w- why were they without the true God? Were they without the true God because they were not getting true preaching based on the law of God and the the law that's the the way that they w- would refer to the Old Testament as it had been given to them at that point in in history. They did not have people that were teaching God's words. They did not have these ordained men who were speaking truth on God's behalf to let them know the nature of who their Savior is. And so this is where, see, like, you know, the passage, we see that the, that the primary example that is given in this passage of how to seek the Lord was through a, a teaching priest, through the, the law. And so what this points us to is not that the priest himself is the vital part, as it is that the priests were the ones who, who had the scroll of the law. They were the ones who read it. They were the ones who were pro- to procl- proclaim it, to explain it to the people. And when they did not have people that were bringing the word and teaching them who God is, then they grew cold. They, they grew distant. And it, it should not be surprised that when we have a God who is the giver of all good things, and then we leave that giver of all good things, then the good things in our life seem to start to shrivel up. But the closer we become to the giver of all good things, the more we see his blessings in our life. So we need to be careful not to make a one-for-one one thing of, well, if I read my Bible today, then I know the fortune cookie said, then good things are going to happen to me. Or if you skip your, your Bible reading and then like something bad happens to you, you'd be like, oh, I know. It's because I didn't do my devotions. It's, it's not quite like that. But like I said, our God, 
He is the source of life and joy and peace. And when we're separated from the one who is all these things and gives all these things, then wouldn't it be natural that if we separate ourselves from the source of life, that the joy of life and peace and everything that we have starts to shrivel up? That's just natural. So trying to apply this to our life today, what does it mean? Well, we live in a time when a lot of people are calling themselves spiritual but not religious. You know, they don't like to do, you know, the Christian thing or the Buddha thing or this. Like, they don't want to do any one of those particular things. And yet they believe that there is a spiritual realm, that there is a divine essence somewhere out there that's involved in the world. And so for them to seek God is through New Age meditations, through yoga, through, you know... What, whatever tools it is that they, they seek to do, and that's how they try to find their own God or the God that's within them, you know, however they like to, to label it. But man, that seems disappointing to me because we have a God who speaks to us. And I doubt that many of us will actually hear the voice of God speaking to us in that auditory voice, but we do have the word of God as he speaks to us, given through the Holy Spirit and written down in his word that we can know very plainly who our God is because he wants to be known. He's not some sort of mystic-y, wishy-washy thing up in the clouds. No, he is real, substantial. He is concrete, and he gives us a substantial word that we can hold in our hands, that we can study, that we can know. And we should thank God for those who teach the word to us. Now, okay, as a pastor... Yeah, it's a little self-serving for me to say, make sure you thank your pastors. But I also believe that it should be more than just the pastors. You know, we should have mentors. We should have parents, grandparents, who are also teaching us the word of God. We, let's become the kind of people who teach right and good doctrine to the people who are around us. Let's find them and let's become these kind of people. And so how does this passage give me confidence? Well, I have confidence, or how does it help me? Well, it gives me confidence that our God wants to be known by us. And the closer we are to God, the more we get to experience the pleasures of his presence. So trying to respond to this, well, this is encouragement to find some way that we're growing in our doctrine. Uh, this is coming up with that idea of the, the teaching. Because you know, we get a sandwich there of, you know, you should seek the Lord. And when you seek the Lord, you'll find me. But what's right in the middle of that seeking the Lord sandwich is this teaching priest, which I don't feel like that's, that language comes up often. That's why it stood out to me. And so it's not simply just kind of blindly reading the, the Bible. I did it. I done, It's done with. Now my fortune cookie says I get good things, right? No, no, no. We want to understand God personally, understand him better. And that's what theology is. That's what doctrine is. It's the putting things to, together to really know who God is. It's, it's not meant to be cold-hearted. It is meant to be an intimate understanding of God. So find people who are going to be teaching you doctrine as well as, you know, you just engaging with the Bible on, on your own time. And so I, I gave, gave a couple of examples that that come to the top of my mind who I think do a great job of this. Uh, there, there is a gentleman by, by the name of Todd Friel um, who does Wretched Radio. I like their, their stuff. Um, he's very intelligent, uh, but he's also, he's witty. He's funny. Um, then there's the Sheologians. Uh, there's a couple of, of ladies who focus on, on teaching women and, and sometimes I'll listen to it with, with my wife and I love the content they put out there. It is very, very insightful. They do a great job of really getting to the core of, of the issue. And so they are, are people who do a great job of teaching doctrine as, as well. And, and there's other sources out there, but these are some of the people that, that I, I think um, they teach accurately, or you know, as accurate as any person I mean. You know, I'm not going to agree with anyone 100% on, on things, but they're... They're reliable people. They're great resources. And they're just enjoyable to listen to. So that's those are my suggestions. But you find what, what works for you in terms of, of seeking out the teaching of the Lord. Because the closer we draw to Him, the more we experience Him in our lives. 
And one of these other ways we do it is through prayer. And let's pray. Father, thank you so much for being a personal God who is not far off, but you are near to us. Well, you're far and you're near. You are you are all things, but Father, um, just give us that, that hunger for your word because we understand that there is a real person, you, on the other side of this. To seek you and understand you better, more and more, every day. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, my friends. And as always, I ask you that you, you, you like this video, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to know when these videos come up. And a comment that you can leave is if you have good resources, if you've got a book or a blog or something that you like to, to listen to or read to help you grow in, you, in your understanding of God. I'm always happy to learn of new resources in our brothers and sisters. So thank you, my friends, and have a wonderful day.